Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our online service. I'm sad that we can't meet together, but I'm thankful that we can meet together online. Uh, our first song is Praise Him, Praise Him. to do just praise him because he is worthy of it let's open a word of prayer dear Heavenly father we thank you for the technology to uh, meet online even though uh, we're not meeting in person we pray now as we gather together that you bless every part of this service pray lord that uh, these songs will glorify you and encourage us and prepare us to hear the preaching of your word i pray lord that we would think of the uh, lyrics and what they say and that they would be a blessing and a challenge and encouragement to us i pray as we memorize your word that it would uh, stick in our hearts that uh, we might not sin against you i pray father for our country and uh, thank you for all those that serve us the all the people in the medical field and the guardy and firemen and we're just thankful for all of them, and I pray you'd watch over them. We do pray for our government. They certainly need wisdom and understanding how to deal with this, and I pray, Lord, that you would burden them to allow churches to meet together. Uh, we do think of our city and our country, that people would come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, so that when, when they think of Christmas, they'll understand how Jesus came, left the glories of heaven to come to to be a man, to die for our sins. And we are so thankful for that. We commit this service together uh, with all of it, Lord, that uh, your name would be honored and glorified. And so we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our next song is uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Thank you. 
truly glory to the newborn king. At this time, Sam Samson is going to uh, lead us in our Bible memorization verse. Our theme for this year is Faithful to the Faith. That is, Faithful to the Faith. On that theme, we have the verse from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 and 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 and 23. So let's say this 10 times together. Maybe at the last time you can try to say it without looking at the Bible. So let's read. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23 Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23 let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23 Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23 let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10 verse 22 and 23 Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Now, last time. See if we can say without looking at the Bible. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Okay, our next song <clears throat> is uh, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
this time we're going to have Sam Sampson pray for us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege you have given us to gather together in your precious name once again. Father, we, we glorify you, we worship you, Father, we exalt you and we adore your name. Father, your name is the only one that is to be worshipped. Father, um, at these Christmas times, we think of the incarnation that you have taken in the form of a, a man to come into this world and to die for our sins. Father, we give you glory because because of you, we have hope. Because of you, we have a reason to live. Because of you, uh, we have strength to live in this world. Because of you, Lord, we have something to look forward and that is heaven above, Lord. Um, Father, we thank you for what you have done on the cross of Calvary, Lord. Um, Father, at this time we give you glory um, and thanks for how you have helped us over the years, particularly in this year, Lord. Though this year, though this year has presented various challenges, Lord, for us, um, your grace and mercy has been beyond uh, our understanding, Lord. Father, you have given us the strength to cope with the situation. You have given us the grace, Lord. And Father, thank you for that. Uh, Father, at this time, I pray for every citizen in our country, Lord. I pray, for, Lord, uh, particularly for the people that are in the hospital, Lord. I pray, Father, that you give uh, your strength, Lord, to fight off the infection and get better. Uh, Father, I pray um, uh, that you... Um, Bless our government, Lord, as they are trying to do the right thing. I pray, Father, that you give them the wisdom, Lord, um, uh, to deal with these challenging times. Uh, Father, I pray uh, and thank you for uh, the vaccine developments that are happening, Lord. I pray, Father, that you bless these vaccination programs that are going to be uh, early next year. I pray, Father, um, that you bless these um, uh, programs, uh, even these vaccinations, Lord, as people are taking it. I pray, Father, that you would work uh, on people's body to fight off even if there are new strains, Lord. I pray, Father, uh, you help us to have the grace uh, to find a new year um, with all goodness um, and find much better than the 2020. I pray, Father, um, uh, that you be with us. Uh, so, Father, at this time, especially, I think of your word. Uh, thank you for establishing your word. Thank you for giving us a perfect word. Father, I pray, even in these difficult times, that your word would flow freely. I pray, Father, even through technology and online services, that your word would have a free course to reach out to people. Father, in these times, Lord, um, many people not knowing the truth and uh, they are perishing, Lord. I pray, Father, that your word would cleanse and reach out and, and help them to be saved uh, from their sins. I pray, Father, um, that you continue to work through our church as well, Lord. I pray, Father, that uh, uh, your word uh, would would show the truth and, and show the light uh, to the world. Father, at this time, I think of uh, our missionaries, Lord, um, especially for the Wuslavans in uh, Blanchestown. And I pray, Father, um, uh, that you help them to do your work continually without any difficulties, Lord. Even in these challenging times, I pray, Father, that you give them the strength. Uh, I think of um, Brother uh, O'Garments, Lord, in Tala. Uh, I pray, Father, that they would have a good online services this morning. I pray, Father, um, that you meet their um, uh, work needs. I pray, Father, that you continue to watch over them and give them good health and keep them safe, Lord. Uh, I pray, Father, um, that you help them to reach out to many families, to, to, to win them for Christ. Uh, Father, I pray at this time once again for your grace um, as we are going to hear uh, your word. I pray, Father, you bless it, uh, and uh, particularly, Lord, um, even people that are attending in these online services, Lord. I pray, Father, that uh, you help them to uh, have your word with, with an open heart so that they could uh, find a blessing. Uh, bless this time together. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Our last song before the announcements is uh, Love Lifted Me.
Praise the Lord for God's wonderful love that lifts us out of all our troubles and our trials. Praise the Lord for his love. At this time, we're going to have the announcements. I trust everyone had a wonderful Christmas. We're back to services online. Uh, Sundays, we have 11 o'clock and then 7 o'clock. You'll uh, do go to the website and click on the YouTube icon and it'll bring you to the uh, church services and, and they'll be uploaded about five minutes before each service. We did take an offering up for um, advertising, YouTube and, and Facebook. If you gave money and, and put it in the church's bank account and didn't uh, say what it's for, just let me know. If you haven't given, you can still give uh, online to to the church's bank account and just make a uh, note that it's for the advertising. If you uh, want to give and uh, don't have the church's bank account, contact me, Pastor Lionel Smith at Outlook.com and I will uh, send you the church bank, uh, bank details. Don't forget Wednesday night we have our Skype prayer meeting. I would encourage you to join. Visit the Facebook page. If you're a visitor watching online, send me an email. Let me know that you're watching and I would appreciate that. If we can uh, do anything for you, let us know. And if you'd like a free Bible, the church will send you one free of charge and we'll pay for the shipping as well. And uh, so just uh, encourage one another and keep in contact and uh, hopefully by the grace of God, we'll be meeting together soon. My text this morning for the sermon is uh, Luke chapter 2. Now on Christmas Day, I went through this, but uh, I want to do it again today. And uh, we'll look at uh, our Savior. So Luke chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 1 to 14. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of Beth the David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And, lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your precious word. I pray that uh, we would uh, be drawn closer to you from the preaching of your word. I pray that it would challenge us and encourage us. And uh, Lord, that we want your name glorified through it. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I want to preach this morning on a Savior. Uh, I enjoy Christmas very much. As I said on Christmas Day, I don't necessarily think that, that December 25th was the birthday of Jesus Christ. And uh, I don't think God really wanted us to know the exact day. Because if he did, he would have sown it to us. But I do like to set aside the day to remember that Jesus Christ came to earth. And again, I said on Sunday morning, uh, for 17 years, I had no understanding of what Christmas is all about. I thought it was about uh, good times, presents giving, meals, family time, time off for me, uh, school, and people off work. And uh, I mean, those are good things, but it's certainly all about the Savior. 
And as the saying goes, Jesus is the reason for the season. Uh, first and foremost, Christmas is about remembering the incarnation. The incarnation is literally God, the Son, becoming flesh. And uh, we remember that Jesus Christ took upon him the form of a man so that he could live a perfect sinless life, so that he could die for our sins and be buried and rise again the third, third day. Now, in our text, in verse 11, it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Let's just, let us remember Christ is our Savior. So uh, first thing I want to see is the shepherds were concerned. In verse 9 it says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Uh, in the Bible, angels were often messengers of judgment in the Old Testament. And uh, we don't know this angel, uh, but they were sore afraid. What does sore afraid mean? It means terrified. They were absolutely terrified. But just imagine um, you're out in the fields and uh, you're far away from people and even the lights of, of the city. And you're out in the field and you're just sitting there and maybe you're half asleep and all of a sudden an unbelievably bright light shows up and it's shining and you can barely see and then you, you, you look up and you see what is the form of a man. It's an angel but it looks like a man. In the Bible angels made appearances like men and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. You would be terrified too. Uh, it was just something unbelievable and uh, night turned into daylight That would be just, I mean, we see lots of stuff in modern days that amaze us, but this is this was beyond anything. It was a very glorious, extraordinary light, and it shone all around them. And they were sore afraid. Why were they afraid? Well, angels often came in judgment. And uh, these... Uh, Shepherds were men of faith, but they, and because they were men of faith, they, they had a good idea about sin and the consequences of sin. Uh, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And these uh, shepherds were, were sinners and they knew it. <coughs> and uh, I would think they were thinking that, they, that this angel may have come in judgment. You know, one angel can kill a lot of people in, in Isaiah 37, verse 36. And the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and forty and five thousands. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. I mean, that's why they were afraid. Uh, that's what the angel of the Lord could do. And they knew they were guilty. And they knew if they got what they deserved, they would be judged there and then. And they were afraid. But I, I like the next verse. In verse 9, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid, uh, greatly exceedingly afraid. But verse 10, And the angel said it unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. They were the shepherds were concerned, but now they are comforted. Uh, they didn't have to be afraid. The messenger can tell good news or can tell bad news, and this angel was a messenger of good news. Everybody loves good news. And that's what the gospel is. It's the good news that Jesus came to earth to, to live a perfect sinless life so he could die for my sins. And that's what the gospel is. It's good news. But everybody loves good news. But sadly, people ignore the good news about Jesus Christ. So what does the angel say? And the angel 
uh, for unto you is born this day, uh, sorry, verse 10. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. He says, Behold. So he's telling them, Look, listen to what I have to say. I've got something very, very important for you to hear. And so they're, they're going, going to hear. But it's, it's a, a message of good tidings and great joy. Good tidings, a good, a good thing that's going to happen. Something's happening, and, and I want to tell you this wonderful news. That's what the angel was doing. He was going to tell them the wonderful news. Well, God doesn't work like that today. He works through people. And God wants people to know the good news of Jesus Christ. And we are to be the, the bearers of that good news. The good news is that th though everyone's a sinner, Jesus loves them. And God commendeth his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. The good news is that Jesus came to earth, took the form of a man, lived a perfect sinless life, and then died as my substitute and as your substitute on the cross of Calvary. But he didn't stay dead. He arose the third day, proving he has power over death and sin. And that's the good news. For the good news uh, is, is that Jesus Christ was born. It was a message of good tidings, a message of hope. And uh, it was a message of great joy. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The joy was that to, to know that their sins could be forgiven because a Savior has come. Oh, that people this Christmas would see the wonderful thing that Jesus did to become a man. And, and notice it shall be to all people. This is, this is the wonderful thing as well. All people includes me. Jesus Christ came for me, which shall be to all people, men, women, children, babies, from Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, Central America, South America, Australia, the Far East, wherever, this message is for you, that God loves you, and that Jesus Christ came to die for your sins. Rich or poor, you might be uh, uh, think you're, 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 you're good enough, but you're not. That's why you need a savior. And we're gonna see this, he came to be a savior. There's many people that are very religious and they think, I'm okay, but you're not okay. You've got to be born again. That's why Jesus Christ came. It's a message of good tidings and of great joy that your sins can be forgiven. And it's for everybody. You see, this: we have the shepherds concerned, the shepherds consoled, and now the shepherds see in Christ. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. This uh, angel made it very personal for them. For unto you is born this day. The, the angel was saying, you need a savior. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. So the shepherds were shown that they needed Christ as their savior. Well, make that personal. For unto you, that's me, is born a Savior. Jesus Christ was born to be my Savior. And uh, he was born in, in the city of David. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, had to be born exactly where the Bible had said. It's, uh, in Micah chapter 5, it Verse 2, it says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though they be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth, shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been of old from everlasting. The Messiah had to be born in Bethlehem. He had to be born from somebody in the tribe of Judah. He fulfilled that. Jesus fulfilled every prophecy regarding his life and death. Everything happened. And now there's prophecies about his coming again. And they will be filled just as literally as he was filled. So who is born? A savior. Savior from what? Well, in Matthew, it tells us the same thing. 
a savior, but it tells us from what we're saved from. If you were in a fire and I ran and grabbed you and, and dragged you out of the that house, you could say I saved you from the fire. Well, what are we saved from? What did Jesus save us from? Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. Uh, well, I'll read... Um, I'll read a few more verses. Um, it says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. The uh, a spousal was a, 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 like a, a marriage before they were actually physically married. Uh, so she was a spouse to Joseph before they came together. That's before they had a physical relationship. Uh, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Uh, just the miraculous conception of, of a virgin having a child and uh, the child was from the Holy Ghost. Verse 19, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her public example, was minded to put her away privily. Joseph was thinking, I'll, I'll do a private divorce. See, they were... They, with the the espoused marriage they were legally married so he would have to put her away but he didn't want to make a big thing of it now verse 20 but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy ghost so joseph is told that uh, mary is going to have a child but she didn't commit adultery. She's going to have this child from the Holy Ghost. Now verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. What a wonderful, wonderful message. So why, would, why is he a savior? And who is he savior of? He's a savior of all men, and he shall save them from what? From their sins. You see, Every single person is a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when we go back to Luke chapter 2, the wonderful message is that, is that Jesus Christ died for all men. And he came for all men. Uh, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And remember, uh, who is the message for? In verse 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Jesus Christ died for every single person. Everyone's a sinner, but Jesus Christ came to die for their sins. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The wonderful news is Jesus Christ came to be a Savior. Savior from what? Save us from our sin. Save us from the penalty and the power of sin. And God is holy. God is just. And if you got what you deserve, you'll die and go to hell. But God is forgiving, merciful, and graceful if you will receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. See, he is Christ the Lord. He is, he is the, the prophesied Messiah. He is the, the anointed of Christ. And he left heaven to die for us. This, is, this was prophesied way back in many prophecies. But in the book of Isaiah... Chapter 53, one of the uh, more famous chapters of the Bible, we have the wonderful passage telling about Jesus Christ. And it says in verse 4, But surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet, did, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him 
the iniquity of us all. Jesus Christ was wounded for my sins. He came to be the Messiah, the Savior of all mankind. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. We were like sheep. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So Jesus Christ came to be the Messiah, to pay for our sins. And so we had the shepherds. They were concerned. Uh, they were they were scared. And uh, they were comforted. And then they saw that, that Jesus Christ, he was their Christ. And so I want to lift this. This talk about the shepherds but now I'm going to talk about the sinner's challenge what are you going to do about Jesus Christ when the shepherds came they believed they believed the wonderful message about Jesus Christ they had to make it personal and that's what God has for each of us he wants us to make it personal he wants each one of us to receive Jesus Christ as our own personal Savior. Receive means to, to, to take freely without anything. All God wants from you is a repentant heart, a change of heart. There's a verse in Revelation, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him and sup with him and he with me. What God wants you to do is open your heart up. Admit to him that you're a sinner. Admit that you deserve a penalty for your sin. We can be quite self-righteous at times and think I'm okay, I, I'm not that bad. That's because we don't realize how bad our sin is. But God is perfectly holy and he hates sin. He hates every sin. We hate the sins that other people do. And sometimes we hate our own sin, but, but we tend to make light of the, our own sins. But God hates every sin. And that's why Jesus Christ came. He came to be a savior. And as we saw in, Ma in Matthew, a savior from what? A savior from your sins. A savior from the, the from, to save you from the penalty of sin. A savior to take, save you from the power of sin. And God just wants you to see sin for what it is. Horrible. And it offends him and it hurts him. And God wants you to have a change of heart. Where you see your sin is horrible. And want to turn to God from that sin. And you come to him by faith. The shepherds by faith. When they were told of the message. They had a, a reaction. And uh Verse 15, and it came to pass as the angel, this is Luke 2, 15, and it came to pass as the angels were gone from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, uh, let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. There was a reaction to finding out who Christ was. They went to him. Well, that's what God wants. He wants you to come to him, though. He wants you to come to him in faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For there is no difference between the for the, sorry, for the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The wonderful message is that Jesus Christ came to be a savior and it was for all people. Would you receive the greatest gift ever this Christmas? Would you receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Simply come to him in faith. Believe that he came as God the Son, lived a perfect sinless life, died in your place on the cross of Calvary, was buried, rose again the third day, and ascended up into heaven. God wants you to believe that. Would you receive him as your Savior today? If you'd like to know how to, more how to be saved, contact me. I would be glad to, to show you from the Bible 
I remember the first Christmas I was saved. What a joyous Christmas it was. What a joyous Christmas to know why Jesus came. God wants you to have that same wonderful news. Receive him today as your Savior. Christian, one quick challenge. The shepherds, after they saw Christ, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. They told everybody about Jesus Christ. Christian, tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ. Tell people why he came. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you for your goodness to us. I thank you for Jesus Christ coming to die for us. And Lord, it's a great blessing. And help each one of us to, to rejoice in it. And I ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Well, I hope you can join us in our Skype chat group now. If you would like to be part of it, our Skype chat after the services, just contact me and I'll add you to the church group. God bless you.